Hey guys, this morning I'm working on the duck effigy vessel. This was one of those forms in the Ancient Pottery Challenge. If you don't know what the Ancient Pottery Challenge is, that's 10 forms from the Ancient Southwest that I've selected to make this season. You can make the same pots I'm making, upload photos with the hashtag Ancient Pottery Challenge to share on Instagram. If you haven't seen that Ancient Pottery Challenge video, I'll put the link to that right up here for you to look at. So the duck effigy is just a regular round pot. So I'm using a round pookie today, just like I would on any pot I made. Unlike the shoe pot that I made last time, which needed an elongated, more of an oval shaped bottom, this one is just a round pot that then has a tail and a head attachment. So it should be pretty straightforward. I'm using a larger pookie because I want it to have a pretty good diameter, but then I'm not gonna make it very tall. I'd like to make it a little squat. We'll see how I can do on that. That's all about that compression pinch, which I'll show you when I get to that point. Okay, let's get started. I'm just about ready now to add my first coil. So I'll build it up into a jar, then I'll add the tail and the head attachment. So we'll see how that comes out.
All right, here I am, a uh, rather standard shaped jar, like a water jar type jar shape. Um, and so I'm gonna let this firm up, it's still pretty soft. Uh, and then I'm gonna come back in a little while, I'll add the head and the tail attachment. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, it's pretty symmetrical. Uh, it's got a decent shape, uh, large enough that I can put a, a fairly detailed design on it. I'll cover this up, let it dry a little bit, and I'll get back with you in a little while. Okay, let's talk about where I'm at with this. Um, I've got the tail and the head attached, and they seem to be holding. So I've got a little bit of smoothing. Uh, I'm gonna do some scraping and some stone smoothing uh, on the upper portion specifically, since I worked on the bottom already, uh, so I wouldn't have to do that after I had the head and tail attached. Um, I've got a little bit of smoothing to do, and then I need to let it dry very slowly. So. Uh, once again, just like I did with the double jar, I'm not gonna get to any slipping or painting on this video because I wanna let it dry nice and slow so I don't have any breakage or cracking uh, heads off or anything. So, so I'm gonna get started on this smoothing process and then uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, here's where I'm at. Uh, I got it all smooth. Uh, I got the shape pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it. I mean, there's always room for improvement and that's how I am with every pot. And you know, I think that's how a lot of artists are. Uh, so I see things that I could do better, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's a nice little jar and I think it's gonna be fun to paint. So 
I've got a lot of work yet to do in, when it comes to letting this dry nice and slow, uh, getting slips on it, getting it polished, getting it painted, which I'm not going to cover in this video. Uh, I will show you the finished product uh, down the road. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, uh, you will see it maybe in the firing process, definitely at the end of the Ancient Pottery Challenge, which I am approaching. Uh, I've got to redo the ladle because I broke that. Uh, I've got the human FG and the OI after this, so literally uh, I am almost done. My goal with this is to let it dry nice and slow, uh, get it slipped and polished when I'm at the right stages of dryness and get it finished up. So. I'll show you that later. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about how to make coil pottery and especially this process of polishing and smoothing and slipping at different stages of dryness, it's really quite complex, but it results in a beautiful product. If you are interested in learning more about that process, I have a series of online master classes that go into collecting wild clay, uh, coiling pottery, uh, finding and processing natural paint slips and pigments, and outdoor pottery firing. I think you'd really enjoy those if you are interested in this process. And I'll put the link to that down in the doobly-doo so you can check that out if you think you might enjoy that. If you'd like to see another video right now on YouTube of me coiling another ancient pot style, check out this video over here, which is going to go into more detail on that process. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.